Hello and welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners number 7. This one is called The Advantages of Using Superheated Steam. When steam normally leaves the boiler, it's called saturated steam. And if you feed this directly to an engine, as you can see here with my Stuart Double 10, you will notice that from the exhaust you're getting a great deal of water coming out. That's because the steam is wet as it leaves the boiler and it's cooling all the way down the pipes and it cools in the cylinders and it cools in the exhaust pipe. So what you actually get is lots of water coming out of the exhaust and it makes a mess on the bench if you bench run the engine. And if you're using an engine like this in a model boat, you will need a condenser oil trap to trap the water and oil mixture to stop it polluting the lake. The problem being of course that the condenser will fill up far too quickly because you're getting too much water. Here the boiler's also running at a low pressure and the lower the pressure the wetter the steam. The higher the pressure the higher the temperature of the water and therefore the steam temperature is higher. In most model steam locomotive boilers, saturated steam leaves the boiler via the wet header, goes down a superheated tube, which sometimes can go through right into the firebox, it returns then to feed the cylinders. These are proper superheated elements and the steam is extremely hot, totally unsuitable for gun metal or brass cylinder engines. All model steam engines will run quite happily from saturated steam, one good thing about saturated steam is the water provides a degree of lubrication, so you do have a slight margin of error should you run out of oil in the displacement lubricator. This is definitely not so with superheated steam. Failure of the oil supply will result in damage to the cylinders shortly afterwards. So the rule is, for a brass or gun metal engine, you need a steam dryer, and you can have higher superheat for a cast iron engine. So to make a superheater for a boiler using a ceramic burner, what you need to do is pass a coil of copper tubing around the outer edge of the ceramic burner, not through the fire. Connect one end of this to the wet header, which is the tap that comes out of the boiler, and the other end goes to the steam engine. If you wanted real high superheat on a boiler like this, you could pass a stainless steel tube through the fire, but it's not really needed. You'll be surprised how much more efficient the boiler becomes with a simple coil of copper tubing around the outside edge of the ceramic burner. Then you will not get such a mess coming out of the exhaust like this. The first thing you will notice is that the water level doesn't drop quite so quickly in the boiler. The whole thing becomes more efficient. This is because the wet steam leaving the boiler is reheated to a higher temperature in the superheater or steam dryer. Depending on the type of boiler you have, this one shown here is a centiflue boiler with water cross tubes. You can actually put a superheater or steam dryer in the chimney itself with a loop of copper tubing going down into the centre flue. But the easiest way with this particular boiler, without spoiling the look of it, is to make it so that the wet steam pipe goes down into the firebox with a superheater coil around the ceramic burner and then back out to the engine. And at the same time, the pipe that leaves the boiler going to the superheater and the pipe leaving the superheater to the engine will be lagged with string. This is very easy to do, you just tightly coil some string around the pipe and once it's done paint it white and it looks like proper insulation and it also stops you burning yourself. You can receive painful burns from the pipe carrying wet steam but the pipe carrying superheated steam that's passed back through the fire or around the fire will burn you much more efficiently. You can't beat good hot steam for running steam engines. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been of some use to you.